All right, so the last time we, um, we were here, we were working through the system of saving the comic to the database. So remember, we spent this effort in programming the uh, save comic screen. So that's what we were doing for a while. We could save. And we're starting to save the data, and then we can see it in the application that there's that there's data in the database. So there's still some nuances we have to deal with regarding duplicate names and such. Um, we will fully polish that, but for the moment, the system works all right. Uh, when we do duplicate names and such, then there's still a little bit to fix up, but we'll get back to it. Um, at this point, when I've uh, saved a comic, uh, the only feedback that there is is that the fields clear themselves. It should be nice. It would be nice that you also get feedback to the user, comic was saved. A uh, person might not have noticed. Everything cleared out, they click save, and like, did anything really happen? Well, we know stuff is happening behind the scenes. We can see it in the console, and we can see it in the, in the database viewer. But we should have some output for the user. Now, we set ourselves up uh, for that uh, previously. If you take a quick look at your index.html file at approximately a line 178 in the save comic screen at 178 or so we created or we should have created a uh, a pop-up right here this there there should be a div data role pop-up and it's just got the message comic save uh, so we started to set this up a while ago when we were designing the the save comic screen I'm sure a while ago and this is going to be a pop-up that appears for the user comic saved or comic was saved or however we want to say it we want that to appear after the the data is saved to the database after the form is cleared out we want that to appear to let people know comic has been saved some feedback so this ID pop comic saved will come uh, will come in handy. Let's go to our index.js file. And let's go find the last place that we were working at. It's somewhere near the bottom of the code, somewhere uh, probably line three fifty two. In the index.js at at line 352 is one place. We'll do this in two places. So on line um, 352, I have L form save comic the zero width uh, index reset reset the form. So clear the save comic form after successfully saving the comic. Okay, good. I want that to clean out the form. But then on the next line, I want to make that pop-up appear um, to, uh, to give them the message, comic has been saved. We've done this before, so it'll look familiar. First, we've got the jQuery selector. We're going to select something. Well, we've got that ID in the HTML file of pop comic saved. That's the one I just showed you in the HTML file. We're selecting that div. <coughs> We're using the dot pop up method. Remember, the process of this is you have to sort of first prepare that div to behave like a pop up. Then you actually display that div as a pop up. You can say prep the div with the message to behave like a pop up. On the next line, it's then I'm going to copy and paste. It's almost the exact same thing, but then with a couple of parameters. So I copied and pasted it. But 
But then the second time around, we're actually then saying in quotes, open, open that pop-up. And then what could follow then are optional options. So simply saying open like that should open it. But if we want to um, deal with some of the options like the animation of that pop-up, comma, curly braces, the name of the option of transition, colon, do flip. So when we had uh, when we had the passwords don't match message, or the one about uh, you know account created login, we had these pop-ups that happened. And we had the particularly named div, prep it, then actually open it, and then some options. Well, if you look at it now uh, with, the, with the foresight or the aftersight of what we've done before, uh, this looks like JSON. Uh, well, let's, let's say a little paper. Let's just put it down. Okay. So this it looks like JSON, doesn't it? It's in curly brackets, like we've seen before. And it has a key value pair separated by a comma. So yeah, there was a little bit of JSON we were using a while ago. Uh, and, it, and it's coming back to us here. So this would be the possible values of the transitions. We had flip. What else did we have? We had flow. We had slide up, slide down. So you can put whatever one you want here. Um, that's going to be the animation for when you properly save the comic. We need it in. We need this in two places. One is in the place where there is no problem in saving it, and then the second one where there was perhaps a duplicate. And we say then um, open the div with a slide up transition animation. This chunk, we need it here. Um, we need it here after successfully uh, saving the data to the database with no conflicts. We also need it in one place a little bit higher up where we might have had the duplicate name of the comic. If we go back up a little bit to case 409 in our switch statement, I'm going to copy that whole chunk. You can copy the comment if you want or not, but you need the pop-up initialization and then the pop-up open. So all those four lines. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to go back up to uh, the top a little bit. Uh, right up here, where we had that case 409, we had case 412 conflict, default conflict, 409 conflict. After we put the comic in the database, that's another uh, moment where we want to say the same thing, which is all just paste it. In my case, it's at about line 338. Those four lines that I just typed, I'm going to also put them into this. Uh, the second uh, possibility of saving. Go ahead and save it and run it and test it out. Question. Well, it was what you just typed. So what you just typed, you copy and paste it up until the, the higher area.
Right, so save it and run it and see if you get the pop-up that gives you the feedback that you've saved the comic. I'm going to save it. I'm going to run it in my browser at the moment so you can see it. You can't really see it on my device, but I'll run it off of the browser. <clears throat> I'm going to save a comic. The spider number one. Click save. Then I get the pop up. Comic saved. So there was a slide up animation. When I click outside of it, it slides back down. So again, there I save it pop-up happens that message is coming from the HTML file as we saw in the HTML file line 178 if you wanted to say something else well obviously you can then reword it how you want there in the HTML file add a comic saved you can word it however you want and then we make it appear with that code right there so did that work? Any questions? Can you show what happens after you click on save? Yeah, I was. Uh, it should pop up. It should slide up. It should slide into view with the message that I wrote. What does your error console say? So it should look like this. Take a look here for a moment when you click save. That pop-up should appear on screen. Okay, let's check out what happened.
Okay, uh, I'm going to write a little note here because I know I'm going to forget. Uh, I was about to write a little note for myself right here. Uh, inside of the... Uh, right after where we just pasted, we're going to add some code here in a little bit that doesn't make sense to write it yet. So I'm just going to make myself an obvious little note here. Make, telling myself, don't forget to write something here. You can do it or not. But I need it here. I know I'm going to forget. So we need one line that'll make sense later. But just a quick note for myself right there. Let's see at this point. At this point, we'll start setting up we can start setting up um, the other half <clears throat> the other half of this um, system in that we've been saving comics to the database. Well, we've got a button view comics. Uh, I've saved one or two comics so far. I would like to be able to start to see them now. So we're going to move over to the View Comics screen. We're going to make this work. 
this is going to have several purposes. One is simply to start to show the comics, but the other is to be able to edit the comics. What if I'm uh, going in here and I'm uh, and I'm writing uh, the name of a comic and and I click save and oops I realized I misspelled it I meant Superman and I wrote superb man so I need to go in and, and fix that uh, so we'll be able to do that in the view comics screen view existing comics and edit existing comics or delete a comic so we're gonna move on to that system there so the way this will work is uh, if you look in the index.html file, we should have our section of view comics. Our section of view comics, and we have a placeholder div. Div show comics table zzz. That's where I've got the placeholder to start to display our real comics. <coughs> so we're going to create an object of that div. Then we're going to write our JavaScript to start to display the comics in this screen. Now, spoiler alert, just like for the previous saving comic, it's not just a quick, uh, you know, db.get. It does require, again, preparation. We need to uh, extract data from the database, perhaps organize it, prepare it, then display it on screen. Then after that, after we do the display, then we'll set up the editing or the deleting of the data. So we should be used to that. It's on the surface, it looks easy when the people be, uh, use our app. It's easy, v, uh, save comic, view comic. But of course, we should know that behind the scenes, we have a lot of setup to do. So the way we'll do this, we need to go first over to the. Um, JavaScript, and we'll create an object of that div. Okay, so that object, um, let's switch over then to the index.js. Let's find where we've started to create these variables for pouch. And we'll do it right here at about line 221. So we've got our section where we are saying our pouch DB code starts here. We created the initial, uh, the initial uh, uninitialized uh, variable of the database. Then we created an object for the form. Next, we'll create an object for uh, that div. Create object for displaying the uh, comic data on screen. Dollar L div show comics table. We're creating, uh, as usual, a JavaScript object uh, representing an HTML node. So we're going to search for it with the jQuery selector. Don't forget the pound sign. Don't forget to spell it properly from your HTML file. I cheated by doing copy and paste. So that's our JavaScript object there, which we're then going to use to start to display it on screen. The way this will work is, whereas previously we needed a trigger of save comic to do anything, we're actually going to have this sort of happening on its own when the app starts. If there are comics, show comics you already have. Once we save a new comic, show the comics that we have. So simply, the person visiting the view comics screen, there should be some data. We can get fancy with filtering it and all of that, of course. But from the beginning, or to start off, we'll just have 
will show what comics are currently saved as soon as you go to the View Comics screen. If there are no comics saved in the beginning, we'll deal with that. So we're going to create a function, of course, to start to set this up. But um, again, what I'm saying is this is going to happen sort of automatically without us having to uh, do a button click. So we'll go to We'll go back to the end of our code. Let's see, after our, after the end of, so at, at about 368, after the end of our saving comics, we're going to create a new function to display comics. Function to prepare function to prepare to display the comics function fn show comics prep Okay, so as I said, it's not simply just going to be db.get, and it will get the comic and show it on screen. Uh, we want to prepare what we're going to show on screen. So we're going to have sort of like a pre-function, a prep function that gets the data ready, then actually to display it on screen is a separate function. Let's write some console output here to show that this function's about is, is starting to run. Okay, so um, just to start off here, again, there's not going to be a button that says, show me the comics. The comics will appear automatically if there are comics to show. So that means as soon as the person logs in, if they have previously saved comics, start showing those comics. If a person has previously logged in and there are no comics, we'll deal with that. But we've got that whole system set up that checks if a user is logged in or not. Remember that? So early on in the code, if we go back, we've got an if else early on. Um, user does exist. Let's see, we need to find it next to init db. We just find that spot there. Okay, yeah, that should be. Uh, what's that? Sorry. Around there, probably, yeah, depending on your code. So it looks like, yes, right here. So at approximately 83, end of if else to check if a user is logged in or out. This is where we first had our init db. This, this whole if else here, this block, is the one that checks is a user logged in or not. If a user is not logged in, then you do nothing so that you allow them to create the account and, and sign in. Or else, yes, a user has existed before, a user has logged in before, so initialize the database, either create a, br a brand new one or connect to one that's existing. Our console says they're logged in. Uh, we set the local storage to who is the person currently logged in based on their email. And then we change the mobile page container we change them to the 
home screen. So we did that a while ago, probably a month ago. But that was the system there. Uh, is a person logged in or not? So in addition to uh, setting ourselves up like that, we need one more thing. So after initDB, we will say, it's about, this is approximately line 80. We'll say, uh, a user exists, therefore show uh, their comics. Function show comics prep. The purpose of that function is to prepare the data in the database to eventually be shown on screen. So a user exists, therefore show their comics on screen. And as we've said before, that function prepares us to display the data on screen. Here's another place where it would be useful to, to show the latest comics. Uh, that's going to be if the person themselves logs in. This whole else if kicks in when it checks. Was a person logged in the last time they used our app? Yes is under else, therefore show the comics. Well, the other instance where there may be comics to show is when the person logs in. Um, there's a person that had their comics saved and then they logged out and then another person logs in to see their comics. So under the function login we should also prepare to show the comics. Let's go find our function login. Remember you can use find control F FN login. In my case it's line 151. Function login, we're going to scroll down into right over here, passwords do match. PG home. Yes, okay, so within this block of else, line 171, user does exist, and the passwords do match. In that case, what should happen is that uh, this, is, this is confirmed that there is a user, that they have an email account here, and their passwords match. So actually what we're missing here, now that I see it, is we need to also initialize the database right here. So we can say uh, user exists and logs in, therefore um, use their database. InitDB will either create a uh, database if one doesn't exist or connect to a database that, um, that does. That's just built into Pouch. The Pouch system automatically you will either create a database if that one doesn't exist or connect to one that ex already exists. So the project seemed to work fine without it. But in my notes here, we need this because when we get more advanced, we're, we're going to need that. OK, well, the second thing after that, then, is we need that uh, function uh, show comics prep. User exists and logs in, therefore use their database. Show their comics on screen.
Okay, for the moment, let's just uh, save it and run it. Um, just save it and run it and look out for the message in your console that says function show comics prep is running. That's all we need to see in the console. If you don't see that output that says that that function is running, then we'll pause to fix it. Uh, so let me run mine just to confirm. So when I open up the console, yeah, without doing anything, all I really want to see is there. I've got this brand new console there. Uh, function show construct is running. That's all I want to see. What it's done before is that the init DB runs this brand new prep comic. Show prep comics is running, and that the user is logged in. If I log out, user is logged out. I run my code again. Because I'm logged out and I run the app, it doesn't say prep comic. That's what I want. It didn't automatically log me in. That's what I want because I logged out. I'll create a brand new account. Right now, I, I just created an account and I just logged in, and it says the function comics prep is running. So you should see it in those two instances. Either just running the app if you had been logged in, or if you manually log in, those are the two instances where you should see function comics prep is running. Let me run that one more time. So I logged in with a brand new account that I just created. I'm going to run it. Uh, from this point and check my console and it should just simply tell me that that function is running Right there function comics prep is running so we're logged in with a with a different user And it says the function is running so we should we should see that before we go on does that does that work for everyone any anyone have any little trouble? Okay. Let me put my code back up there Function comics prep Alright, so if we're seeing this function show comics prep, uh, this is what's going to get us into the um, into the whole system to actually show the comics. As long as we're working at it like this, then uh, we'll be on track. So actually, let's take our first break, because after the presentation and the little bit of coding here, I guess it's break time. So let's take our first break. It's about 7.25-ish. We'll be back at 7.35.
and then we'll go on.